and welcome to Miller Motorsports Park for the Pirelli World Challenge Nissan Championship Finale brought to you by Motul. I'm Jeff Lepper. I'll be joined shortly by Greg Creamer up here in the booth as we get set to start round number 15 of our GT, GTA, and GTS category cars at this beautiful race facility here at Miller Motorsports Park. A lot of great things happened in qualifying. We'll go ahead and review our Starting grid on our live web stream here. Welcome everybody at WorldChallengeTV.com. But your pole sitter overall in our GT category, it was Guy Smith from Beverly United Kingdom and his Bentley Breitling Mobile One Bentley Continental GT3, a lap record pace of a 148.524. Second place, Mike Skeen and his Hawk Performance Audi R8. And the reason for that's important. He doesn't get any bonus points, but he's ahead in second place in the points of Johnny O'Connell. Starting in third, the teammate to your pole sitter, Guy Smith, the second of the two Bentleys, uh, also the Continental GT3 from College, Pennsylvania, starting in third. In fourth, it's Robert Thorne, the KPAX Racing McLaren MP4-12C. In the fifth place, Ryan Dial from Winter Park, Florida, the Effort Racing Porsche GT3R. Sixth place, outside of row number three, it'll be Alex Figgy from Denver, Colorado, and the K-Pax Racing McLaren MP4-12C. Anthony Lazaro, third place in the championship from Atlanta, Georgia, in the R Ferry Motorsports Ferrari 458 GT3 Italia. Starting in the eighth position, your points leader, two-time Pirelli World Challenge and defending champion, it's Johnny O'Connell from Flowery Branch, Georgia, and his Cadillac Racing Cadillac CTS VR. Andy Pilgrim from Boca Raton, Florida, and the Cadillac Racing Cadillac CTS VR starts in ninth. Andrew Palmer, switching cars with James Safranis this weekend. He'll start in the 10th position, the Global Motorsports Spider Thermal Club Audi R8 Ultra. Andy Lee, how about this? Starting in 11th position, not your pole sitter in GTS. He's in a Lamborghini Gallardo from Laguna Bicycles, Crown 7 Invisible Glass with Rider Engineering. Great job by Andy Lee this weekend. Starting in the 12th position, first place in our GTA category from Angleton, Texas, the Effort Racing Porsche G23R of Michael Mills. Starting in third place, Sorry, 13th overall, second in our GTA category from Boston, Massachusetts in the Black Swan Racing Black River Caviar Mercedes-Benz AMG SLS GT3 Tim Pappas. In 14th, great to have Alex Welch back to the Pirelli World Challenge Championship from Inglewood, Colorado in the Global Motorsports Group Prestige Imports Morgan Adams Foundation Audi R8 Ultra. Starting in 15th, Marcelo Hahn, five wins on the season. Had a lot of DNFs, unfortunately, as well, from Sao Paulo, Brazil, in the Blau Pharmaceutical Ryder Lamborghini Gallardo FL2. Starting in 16th, Heinrich Hedman, second in our GTA category class in the Dragon Speed Ferrari 458 GT3. Alex Lloyd, returning back to Pearly World Challenge season, and making his third weekend start in the RobertMeans.com CRP Racing Chevy Corvette, starting in 18th in our GT category. Another one of our GTA drivers, Dan Knox, third in the GTA points in the ACS Manufacturing Performance Speed Deck Dodge Viper SRT GT3R. Jeff Courtney in the KindaRexstoff.com Audi R8 starts in 19th, 20th. Louis Philippe Motor out of St. Donal, Quebec in the Le Bon. Dodge Viper. This is a comp coupe, but a little bit of extra parts on that comp coupe, so a little quicker than those trying to catch up with the GT3 spec Viper. Walt Boland from Tarpon Springs, Florida, and the Tampa Bay Jaw Surgery Center's Audi R8, supported by M1 Racing, starts in the 21st position. Just unfortunate qualifying, no qualifying time for James Safran as the team principal in that Spider the Thermal Club Global Motorsports Group Audi R8, 22nd in our GT category. Going to our GTS category, your pole sitter points leader Mark Wilkins in the putonthebrakes.org Kia Optima starts in first. Jack Baldwin from Marietta, Georgia in the Reset MD Porsche Cayman S. Going to go ahead and throw down here to Greg Creamer on our worldwide live stream to go ahead and go for our live web stream. Unfortunately, we're having some communication problems with Greg Creamer down on the start finish line there, so not able to throw to Greg. So we'll go ahead and continue our grid run in our GTS category. We said before, Jack Baldwin starting second place in GTS, third in the Pearly World Challenge GTS points in that Reset MD Porsche Cayman S. Nick Janssen starts in third place in the second of the two Kia Motors America Kia Optimus. This one, the DonorsChoose.org Kia just got a win in our Touring Car A category in the Kia Forte Coupe. So good run from Nick Janssen. See if he can double up here today. Starting in the fourth position, the guy that knows his way around Miller Motorsports Park, driving the natural curves, speed34.com, Aston Martin Vantage GT4. How about that for Nick Assayan starting in fourth? 
Drew Riggetts, his teammate, right behind him in fifth from Denver, Colorado, in the racers group Aston Martin Racing North America, Aston Martin GT4. Jack Roush Jr., the Roush Road Racing .com. Ford Mustang Boss 302R starts in sixth position in our GT category, making his Pirelli World Challenge debut start. Don't see him on the grid, unfortunately. Problems for Vesco Kozarov. He would have started seventh in that Nissan Skullcandy stance, Nissan 370Z. Great story here. Now starting uh, in the eighth position. Uh, he might get moved up to seventh. We'll see if Vesco can make the call to the pre-grid from Westland, Michigan. Brand new car. Six days the Rahegan Racing Team built this car. And Pitcher Cars East, Gino supporting that. Grand Sanitation on that car as well of Dean Martin. Great job by that whole team starting in eighth position. Lawson Aschenbach, second place in the Pirelli World Challenge GTS point standings in his Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro starting in ninth. How about this for a story? Your 2011 Pirelli World Challenge Touring Car Champion, Michael Cooper, starting in that Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro ZL1. He steps in for Tony Gaples in the number 28 Camaro now from Black Dog Speed Shop. Alec Udell starts in the 11th position in the Watson Racing Ford Mustang Boss 302S from Motorsports Development Group. Starting in the 12th, it's Mark Clinton, the Invisible Glass Premier Champ, Aston Martin GT4. Mitch Landry starts 13th in our GTS category in the Versacrane Deep South. Ford Mustang Boss 302S, also from Motorsports Development Group. Tony Gaples doing a one-off this weekend in the Black Dog Speed Shop. Ford Mustang Boss 302S, the number 11, just on the side of a Mustang this weekend. Brad Adams in the voodoo music, Dat Dog, yo! MTV Raps, Leo Capalde Racing Ford Mustang starts in the 15th position. Jay Mattis will start 16th in our VP Fuels Porsche 996. Now, that's not a cup car like you see in the GT version, but it is a Porsche Carrera 996. So he'll be starting in the 16th position. Do not see him on the grid as well. We'll wait to see if he can make that call. Jeff Reeves in the Shadow Works, best IT Chevy Camaro. He'll start in the 17th position. 18th, your Rookie of the Year leader right now in our GTS category, Jorge De La Torre from McAllen, Texas, in the racers group Aston Martin Racing, Aston Martin GT4. Buzz McCall from Boca Raton, Florida, and the ResetMD.com. Porsche Cayman S starts in 19th and 20th, not making the call to grid here this weekend. Craig Capaldi of Richmond Township, Michigan, the Wolverine Bronze, Capital Racing, Ford Mustang Boss 302S. What well, does set the grid for round number 15th? The penultimate round of the Pirelli World Challenge turning, oh sorry, I just got done doing the turning car race. The GT, GTA, and GTS category cars. If you just tuned in to WorldChallengeTV.com for our touring cars, had an epic battle. Once again, congratulations to race winners Adam Pollan, Nick Janssen, and Brian Price in our touring car, touring car A, and touring car B spec classes, respectively. Respectively. How about this weekend here, though? All part of the Nissan Championship finale, brought to you by Motul here at Miller Motorsports Park as the series returns since 2012 when the last time we were here for the Pirelli World Challenge. When the lights go out, we go green. 42 cars set to take the green flag here for round 15. Go ahead and take a quick look at some stories that are developing here in the Pirelli World Challenge. Looking down on our pre-grid here, one of those biggest stories has got to be the pole sitter here, Guy Smith. Mike Steen wanted it so bad. Seven points is a bonus for getting the pole position. The gap between Mike Steen and Johnny O'Connell still sits at 42. Don't count out Anthony Lazaro. He's 160 points behind Johnny O'Connell, but only 118 points behind Mike Steen. Anything can happen here. Still two full races to go, a little over... Um, 282 points that are available if you max out both races, so anything can happen. A new Pirelli World Challenge rule in the 2014 season, you have to complete 70% of the race laps to get credit for points. So if any of our two drivers in the lead in any of our categories have a problem within 70% of the race distance and are unable to finish the race, they'll get a big fat zero in the points, not what they're looking for. Pre-rest festivities still going on down on our pit lane. Unfortunately, still having some communication problems down on the start here to work down with Greg Creamer, unfortunately. So, yeah, unfortunately, just not able to have the, the means to go down there, unfortunately. But, hey, we'll be able to go green. 50-minute sprint race for round number 15.
Looking back at our GTS category, some of the stories there, when we look at the point standings, Mark Wilkins gets the poll, gets seven bonus points. That gap is now 87 over Lawson Aschenbach and a, a 201 over Jack Baldwin. you got to think Jack Baldwin in that reset MD. Porsche Cayman, of course, racing for Kelsey all all season long here to close that out. Needs to just win both races and let the championship play out. As long as he can get max points, do what he needs to do, we shouldn't have a problem. Just waiting here for our command to start engines. And once again, that's going to be coming from Jay Schaefer, senior manager at Nissan North America. Nissan closing out our championship finale here at Miller Motorsports Park. Just about to give that command, and we'll be underway with the formation lap. Cars will come down the front stretch here, park on this glorious two-thirds of a mile front stretch, race down into turn number one. They call that turn number one sunset on the west end of this beautiful facility here at Miller Motorsports Park. Just about to give that command, and we'll get underway. All led out by our Cadillac CTSV pace car, and the field will be behind by our Cadillac, CTS, our Cadillac Escalade safety vehicle. So we really appreciate Cadillac, all they do providing our pace car, and safety vehicle here at Miller Motorsports Park. And there was our command to fire engines. You can hear it in the background over the cameras. Exciting stuff as we get set to start round at number 15. Greg Creamer will work his way back up to the booth. We'll get the cars on their formation lap. Still missing the call to grid, looking down on our pit lane here. I do not see James Sofronis on the pre-grid. I do not see Vesco Kozarov, Craig Capaldi. Still missing a few of our drivers. There it is that we talked about that before, that beautiful Cadillac CTSV pace car leading the field. Guy Smith, Mike Skeen, who is it going to be? How is this championship going to play out? Well, we see a repeat of Sonoma where these guys battle back and forth, nose to tail, back and forth for this championship. It looked like uh, those guys were going for their life here. want to welcome once again worldwide everybody at worldchallengetv.com. Our online coverage is presented by Cadillac. So looking at our Motul race analysis, this is going to be a 50-minute timed event. Once again, Miller Motorsports Park, a permanent road course. It's going to be a 3.048, the outer loop, as they call it here at Miller Motorsports Park. Sitting about 75 degrees, but high elevation. We're over 4,000 feet here at the Great Salt Lake. Our Pirelli storylines, we got to go through and talk about these championship battles. Johnny O'Connell, Mike Skeen, Anthony Lazaro in our GT class, in GTS, Mark Wilkins, Lawson Aschenbach, Jack Baldwin. Who's it going to be? GT3 versus GT spec in our GT class. GTS is going to be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, normally aspirated, turbocharged. There's so many different scenarios that will play out. I don't even want to bet on this one, but a lot of great Cummings here for round 15 of our Pirelli storylines as we get set to start. Round number 15, once again, part of the Nissan Championship Finale brought to you by Motul as Greg Creamer coming up into the booth here. We've got our pre-race festivities underway. Our first presentation lap for our GT and our GTS cars. Once again, led around by that beautiful Cadillac CTSV pace car. I'm not sure how this is going to end up, Greg. It's going to be exciting to say the least. We might crown a champion at the end of this race or we could be closer in the points. Who knows how it's going to turn out? One of the two. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's what it comes 50, down 50 to. 50-50 shot, right? Exactly, exactly. And, of course, you know, you've got that incredibly close points battle, really, uh, that's uh, that's unfolding that's unfolding in, uh, in the GT division. GTS, well, you know, it's not as close, but 
things happen in racing, and that's you know that's what we've got. To, we've got two races to go, uh, but this is, as I said, uh, you know, down trackside. This is you know an opportunity for big things to at least give us indications of what's going to happen for the championship, and I don't see uh, any way that that changes. And of course, you know what we really haven't talked about too much is uh, in the GTA, the subcategory for the Sportsman Cup award from BRM Chronographs for our sportsman drivers. Uh, you know, the point swing isn't that big there between first and second, but. They're generally running, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth in the points, so the swings there are a little bit shallower, and uh, so it's a little bit tougher. And uh, Mike Mills comes in here. I mean, five wins. He's had uh, up until the last round at Sonoma, four in a row, has brought him back into the points. I mean, there's stuff in all three of our divisions, if you will, uh, within the GT category here. It is spectacular, and what a field, Jeff. I mean, you know, you take a look at things here, and uh, we've got some 41 cars lining up between the two categories. Uh, that's going to set this out, and, uh, you know, our coverage presented by Cadillac, it's going to be furious, and, uh, boy, are we in for some fun. Yeah, it sure is, and watch the front grid of this. The Cadillacs have amazing launch control. The McLarens, the Bentleys, not so much. If Johnny O'Connell can get in front of everybody here at the start, it's going to be a battle royale here going down in turn number one. Waiting for the green flag from the back of the grid. There it is. It flies. That means we are now in the official start sequence. And we're going to keep an eye out here. Watch for it. Was, as always, when the lights go out, and they're on. When the lights go out, we go racing. Revs are up. We're green. Oh, Mike Skeen, absolutely dead stick. Going nowhere. Johnny O'Connell and Andy Pilgrim both launching. O'Connell might be taking a run for the lead up and around the outside and down these long, long straights here. This long straight. That Cadillac really spools it up. But look at that. And we've got a couple of cars, including, I think, there's that Nick Janssen and... Oh, Wilkins, both of them bottled up. We've got one of the Black Dog. I think that's Michael Cooper involved. But both of the Kias, huge implications for GTS. And I don't see any way here that we're not going to go full course caution right off the bat. But the amazing thing is it was a great launch. And uh, hanging on to that lead, uh, what a start by uh, Robert Thorne. But Johnny O'Connell hanging in there again. Almost got to the lead early and now slips back a spot. Ryan Dial is knifed underneath, but the two Cadillacs, third and fourth, skiing at the back almost. And both of the uh, of the uh, Kias, the GTS leader uh, in the points as well. Wow. Yeah, skiing pulled off into oh, the he secondary broke pit something. lane. He is done. Boy, we talk about championship implications. <laughs> Mark Wilkins got the tow truck hook up to him. He's done for the race unless they can get that car back on down on pit lane. Nick Janssen walking down pit lane. Just got out of his TCA car, got the win in that touring car A category. Wow. But both these Kias out at the start of round number 15. Unbelievable. So serious points contenders out. This is just unbelievable what we're seeing unfold here right now, folks. We said it, it could go either way. Anything could happen. All part of our Pirelli storylines. We had no clue how this was going to happen. Never would have called it this way. No. And it's definitely by far not over. If these guys can get those cars back down on pit lane, get them fixed, complete 70% of the laps. You know, there's 20, I believe 22 or 24 G, 22 GT cars, you might be able to salvage a 22nd place finish. Points are points. you got to get what you can get. you got to go after it if there's any way to fix them exactly. We are full course caution. There's no way they were going to be able to get these cars. The two Kias cleared up here before the field came around. And so as a result, full course caution right off. Skeen, like you said, is pulled off and parked. Uh, he too is going to try and do anything he can to get that car fixed and get back out. Uh, you know, you have to think when something like that happens on the start, uh, a broken half shaft, something in the drive line failure, that's not a quick fix. So the CRP team right now, Jeff, they are going to be in mad scramble mode too. Oh, they sure will be, and I'm, I guarantee you we'll have every single Audi engineer that is on this facility yeah. right down at that car as well because championship impl implications in the manufacturer's championship with both Cadillacs ahead of Andrew Palmer in his lone Audi R8 in the top five. Yeah, just spectacular stuff. And Robert Thorne, man, I mean, making good, had a great qualifying run and uh, immediately finds himself absolutely at the sharp end of things here. Just a spectacular launch for that young man as well. And once again, you know, what the Cadillac boys are capable of doing with those launch control and those starts, to have Johnny O'Connell hunting for the lead down at the end of the straight, that was mega. That's exactly what they wanted then with Skeen's problems. It just magnifies it. Yeah, eighth and ninth, and now they're third and fourth that quick. Yeah. Uh, we're still looking for our optimum battery best inning start, but I don't think it's going to be much better than Johnny O'Connell yeah. from eighth place up to third, picking out five positions. We'll get an official count on that as soon as we get our and catch our breath.
from this start. Unfortunately, did not see what happened to the back of our no. GTS field. Was too focused on watching Mike Skeen trying to get underway and Alex Figgy in the second of those McLaren MP4 12Cs not able to get started. So we do not have any information what happened with the Kias. And here it is in the championship battle. Mark Wilkins absolutely sick to his stomach as he crawls out of his Kia. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's just mega, isn't it? And the interesting thing, Jack Baldwin has now assumed the lead with those issues. And of course, Jack had uh, the you know a great qualifying run and moved into second in qualifying. But Nick Asayan has jumped up into a second spot right now in the natural cures. Aston Martin, Jack Roush Jr. Uh, you know qualified back in the sixth spot is now up into third. Alec Udell, boy, this kid, what a start. This guy has been able to put together from 11th up into fourth, and he's been mega with his starts as of late in that Watson Racing Mustang. Well, that's seven positions, so that yeah, eclipses so Johnny O'Connell, so Johnny's got trash control. Yep. Alec Udell Alec, doesn't have Alec, that. <laughs> Alec Udell just got skills, <laughs> is what he's got. Uh, awesome, and now in fifth, Lawson Aschenbacher. Remember, Lawson, after qualifying, was mired ninth. back in ninth. Didn't look like uh, things were going to go too well for him. Well, right now, with Wilkins out, Lawson is, is fifth, and he's got a pretty decent little points margin to Jack. If he can move up a spot or two, you know, this one's on, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. You wow. see it happen Who knows like what's going to have the championship, but you yeah, know, you don't want this you know, to happen. Mark Wilkins, the definitive nice guy. I say I hate to see this kind of thing happen. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, it's not devastating. I mean, it's devastating, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not over. 87-point lead. If yep. Jack Baldwin leads every single lap and sets the fastest race lap and wins the race, he's only going to be down. Uh, I don't think Jack Baldwin can't catch him and pass him. But Lawson Aschenbach still has a chance. If Lawson does all that, he'll only be 60 points behind. Yep. So that, things can change. Yeah, it was absolutely. 80 points at the start of this race. Yeah, absolutely. So it's going to be, uh, well, I'll tell you, this is just incredible what we've seen happen here uh, in the early going. And obviously uh, still working on the cleanup, so at least one more lap under caution. It looks like uh, Janssen's car is going to have to go up onto the uh, flatbed. But Wilkins, that car looks like it's, uh, it's moving. The question is, is whether he's going to be. He might be able to drive this one off. He's. I think he's still in the car. No, Mark Wilkins oh, is out of the car. The, he's yeah. on the top of the. Okay. Yeah. It's. Uh, the, yeah. The railing. The. Uh, the pit railing away. Wow. Both of these cars here, yeah. done. Oh. Yeah. They'll get. They got Kia right there saying, "Go back to our pits right now if they can figure out what broke on this car, get it repaired, get Mark back out there, and try to complete 70% of the race distance and get some valuable points. That could be a championship saver both for Mark Wilkins in the Drivers Championship and Kia in the Manufacturers Championship. Yeah, just unbelievable. And we, like you said, we did not see what happened, but Wilkins. Janssen was lined up right behind him. If Wilkins broke something like Skeen did on the start and paused, Janssen launched and, and, and got into the back of him, that's just one possibility. There's, you know, multiple, obviously, versions uh, that could have unfolded there. But, uh, wow, just stunning. Looks like Vesco Kozarov, he was not on the pre-grid area, but did start from pit lane. He's underway. Good to see in that Nissan Skull Candy stance, Nissan 370Z. Yeah, and the number 28 behind him, of course, uh, found himself uh, caught up behind these two guys, and so he's even further behind right now, running behind Vesco Kozarov. So while we continue under caution here, we want to once again, as you, uh, for those of you watching here on our global web feed, uh, want to say a big thanks to Cadillac for uh, presenting the uh, coverage of this 15th round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships for GT and GTS, all part of the Nissan Championship finale at Miller Motorsports Park, presented or brought to you by Motul. Uh, so the field now, this shot is, uh, you can always tell, this shot with that little bit of a Quick jog to the right to set up for the corner. That's the Black Rock hairpin heading into it, uh, the Stansbury Mountain Range. Uh, if that camera would pan up just a little bit. Uh, I mean, that's the, one of the great things about this track. You know, you could say, well, it's in the middle of the Great Salt Desert. Is it pretty? It's nestled in between essentially four different mountain ranges. There's a little mountain ridge that's out in the Great Salt Lake. There's the... Uh, the Desiree Peak to the west, there's the uh, Stansbury's to the east, and there's a little mountain range that sort of trails off of the Desiree uh, to the south side of things. So uh, it's an absolutely beautiful venue. So while we continue under caution, they're still trying to get Nick Janssen's car moved. And it looks like they might be able, let's see, that one's going to, now they're going to get that truck lined up. So we've got at least probably one more lap of caution. So on our global web feed, we're going to take a little bit of a break. And uh, we will be right back to our coverage on the global web feed. Of course, we'll stay put right here, calling everything on the PA. Welcome back to our coverage of the Nissan Championship Finale at Miller Motorsports Park, brought to you by Motul here on uh, our global web feed. 
glad to have all of you with us uh, that are watching uh, from around the globe as well as everybody here at Miller Motorsports Park listening on the PA. Great to, great to have you with us. Uh, you know, we hate how this happens, but sometimes it does. And, uh, you know, a caution right off the bat on the standing start as soon as we get that cleared. And they're just really struggling for some reason to get Nick Janssen's car up on the back of the flatbed over there. Uh, and I don't know whether it's uh, because something broken on the car or just because of angles, the way that the truck has to be. It just seems to be taking an inordinately long time. Uh, but they want to do it right. They want to do it safely. Obviously, what you don't want to have happen uh, is to uh, hurt the car worse getting it off of the uh, track. Looking on your screens there, you see Alec Udell at number 17, Watson Racing Motorsports Development Group, Ford Mustang, picked there's a, up. There's a reason we're following yep, him, aren't we? Eight yeah. positions on the start overall to get the Optima Battery's Best Standing Start Award. Congratulations to that young man. 18 years old, just, uh, what, two weeks ago, started classes at Clemson University and, uh, you know, takes a little break on occasion to come and uh, be one of the top competitors in the Pirelli World Challenge GTS division. So, uh, well done to Alec Udell and that Motorsports De uh, Development Group and the uh, Watson Racing support that has really been huge for them. Yeah, how cool is it, though, to go to college and be like, yeah, race car driver, professional, watch yeah. me on TV. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be I'm neat. I'm going away. Check me out. <laughs> uh, I don't need to play football. But just getting word that Mike Skeen's <laughs> down in the garage area and the crews and the engineers are billowing on his car, ripping parts off, trying their hardest to get underway. Don't have an official word of what the problem was right now, but it looks like that car just did not have any drive, so maybe a transmission problem. If it is terminal, unfortunately, that will be it for Mike Skeen. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's, it isn't a quick fix. All right, they've got Janssen's car finally on, on the flatbed. If they can uh, mosey here and exit, uh, we might be able to get this one green here. The field right now is heading toward Clubhouse, so it's got four corners yet. So we're going to see if race control is able to say we're going right now. Yep, just said, lights out of the pace car. We are going green, this time with still 40 minutes. Okay, 37 minutes, uh, 39 minutes of racing yet to go. Plenty. There you see the story really now. Johnny O'Connell, what he wants to do is maximize his finish but not take risk because he's got Mike Skeen parked uh, off in the garage. So this is a mega opportunity, and look at who he's got uh, right on his six. That's a, a nice wingman to have, man. Well, all this happened in, in 30 seconds. I can't wait to see what happens over 37 minutes remaining. Yeah. Stick around. It is going to be exciting. Waiting to go back green. Here we go. Robert Thorne in the K-Pax McLaren. Look, you can't even see Ryan Dial tucked up behind him as the green flies. We are racing once again at Miller Motorsports Park. Way down to the inside goes Guy Smith trying to make some moves here on this start. And I think he just made a move, got around Andrew Palmer. And now Dial showing the nose, trying to do something, but not going to happen. Thorne leads down into one. Dial, look at that move by Smith, who had dropped back a number of spots. He gets it uncoiled and jumps up now, splits the two Cadillacs right into fourth. Well, great stuff. Andrew Palmer back around Butch Leitzinger as he lost two positions over Guy Smith and Butch Leitzinger. And boy, what about Guy Smith, your yeah. pole sitter? Unfortunately, once again, just cannot get the cars launched. They're going to work on that in the offseason. We'll look for great things coming back from them. As Butch Leitzinger trying to get around Andrew Palmer, he defends. He did defend, but look at this. There you go. Guy Smith now has gone around Johnny O'Connell. And Guy had dropped back to sixth on that start. He's not even through the first third of the lap, and he's up to third. Well, I'll tell you what, that Brightly Mobile One, Bentley Continental from Dyson Racing, uh, those guys, and Guy Smith in particular, who did a lot of the development work on that car, have it hooked up. Here we go. This great run through witchcraft. Just absolute flat chat through this section of track. And now up into the attitudes. What a tricky sequence. Here you see the elevation change through first, second, now down through bad attitude, and on to that chute that's going to head them uh, over into, uh, eventually into clubhouse turn. We're watching the battle in the GTS category, too. Uh, don't have a shot of that on the cameras yet, but just uh, letting you know that it looks like it's still going to be your leader that we had at the green flag drop, Jack Baldwin. So watch out for Jack Baldwin as he's trying to salvage a championship here. Well, what a golden opportunity for him to get some significant points back and close this up a little bit. And that little Porsche that can has been this weekend, uh, you know, even though it's it, it's a six-cylinder up against eights and turbos, uh, the the uh, ECU in that car built by Porsche, the, the team has said does a phenomenal job of adjusting for the altitude. And he said we don't lose as much as maybe some of the others do. So he's having an absolutely good go of it and uh, finds himself. But how about Nick is saying second place? That guy and this track, they are as one. Nick has always gone like gangbusters here. And there he is putting his nose down to the inside, putting the mirror there, trying to get a draft behind Jack Baldwin, going out, 
cooling that engine off a little bit. Best run for Nick is saying in a little while. You know, he has won a Pirelli World Challenge event before. Yep. Wants to try to see if he can make that too in his career. And that natural cure, Speed 34, Aston Martin GT4. Well, and the thing, uh, obviously, for Nick is, uh, you know, he obviously gets around this track very well. You just, you know, every once in a while you find a track that you really, really like, and he's able to absolutely get it going. You know, when he moved to the Aston Martin program this year, you know, he was the guy, if there was bad luck in the, in the uh, TRG AMR team for which he runs, it was Nick's. And a lot of it was they had glitches in the ECUs, buried codes they couldn't find. Once that cleared out, Nick said, it's going to take me a little bit now to really learn the limits of this car. I think he's there. Yeah, he's doing a great job yeah. pedaling oh, for the overall lead in the GTS category. Lawson Oshabach starting to put some pressure on Alec Udell, trying to pick up some positions. Second in the championship has a good chance here to take over the points lead. Mark Wilkins is out as of right now. So Lawson Oshabach wants to capitalize on the problems that Mark Wilkins had in his Optima and try to take over this GTS points battle. And look who's right behind those two guys, Mitch Landry, who uh, also is having an absolutely superb weekend. We've seen Mitch show some great signs of speed uh, on a couple of events, and he's got it working for himself right now, that is for sure. And uh, watching now the GT battle, there is Butch Leitzinger, and uh, there's Anthony Lazaro. So those guys right now uh, are in a serious scrap at this point for essentially um, what is uh, going to be the seventh spot. And by the way, Tim Pappas has gone around Michael Mills, picked up the lead in the GTA subcategory for the sportsman drivers. Well, good job for him. Got yeah. his breakout win this year in that GTA category at Road America, looking to see if he can make it two on the season. He's one of the drivers in the Pirelli World Challenge GT and GTS contingent who's got a win on this track previously, not in World Challenge, but in the America Le Mans Series GT Challenge category a few years back. So Tim uh, also clearly likes this track. Yeah, good run for him. Had Thomas Jaeger from AMG in the test day setting that car up for him, getting that ready. But Andrew Palmer defending over Butch Leitzinger. And this has been the battle here all race long yeah. so far. I say that, but it's only been a couple of laps. But uh, yeah, yeah. they're going back and forth. Butch Leitzinger looking to the inside on the outside there. Whoa, it looks like a power move there to go right around that Audi. Boy, that was nice. Yeah, like you said, he just went the outside and then just closed the door. Palmer tried to come back, couldn't quite get it done. By the way, Guy Smith just set fast lap of the race at a one minute fifty point six, and that uh, you know that's a pretty darn good lap of the early going. Heavy on fuel right now, and uh, we talk about it. That's huge because that fast lap in each class determines the pole in tomorrow's season finale. So uh, Guy Smith could be going for another front row start here. Interesting. Yeah. And you mentioned that Mike Skeen does not get a lap no, no time. Starts from the back of the GT category. Yeah, so brutal. just bad to worse for Mike Skeen in that Hawk Performance CRP racing. If you're looking for him right now and just joining our live web feed here at WorldChallengeTV.com on the start, Mike Skeen stalled, had a problem, pulled off. He is done for the race. Yeah, and same thing if you're wondering what about the uh, Kias. You know, Mark Wilkins leading in the championship. Both key is taken out at the start. We did not see what happened. Uh, we're sorry about that. We'll find out the best we can. But both of them hauled off on flatbed. Skeen was at least able, able to get the car pushed into the pit area, but they went off on flatbeds. Here's your overall leader, though, and let's uh, let's give Robert Thorne some serious credit. This young man has been mega this weekend at a great qualifying run, but wow, got to the front, and uh, he has driven away from the likes of Ryan Dial. Yeah, you put your name with Ryan DL. That's a pretty good company to be in. Good job there. That normally aspirated Porsche GT3R split by the two turbocharged forced induction cars being the McLaren and the Bentley first and third. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Dial, everybody figured that that Porsche would probably be pretty good here uh, on the on this track. And, of course, you know, they're running a, a, you know, that's a Porsche effort uh, through effort racing as well. So, pretty serious stuff. And you get a pilot like Ryan Dial, I mean, he's going to be good regardless. There's a look at Jack Roush, who, uh, you know, took advantage of the misfortune of others and finds himself right now in third. That's podium opportunity right there. And here's Lawson Aschenbach battling back with <laughs> Alec Udell, trying to go on to the inside, coming down through this corner over under looking for his way around wants to get as many points as he can he has a great opportunity to capitalize on that season championship sits 87 points behind before the green flag dropped going to be well ahead of that at the end of this race yeah, you can see him take that little bit of a look. And I think right now, the pace of these two, they're drawing back in on Jack Roush. Uh, but the guy that I'm just mega impressed with right now is Nick Asayan, who is glued to the back of no less than Jack Baldwin right now. And uh, just staying. There they are. You just see them going out of frame. I mean, he's only a couple of car lengths back. That is huge. Yeah, last time by, he was about a tenth of a second quicker. So we'll see if Nick Asayan can put his head down, start running down that Porsche Cayman S, the reset MD of Jack Baldwin. 
also supported. Great support there. We talk about the charities here. Racing for Kelsey for Jack Baldwin. Stop Tech, Motul on the side of that. GT Sport Racing, Goldcrest. All the partners that uh, Jack Baldwin's put yeah. together with himself and Buzz McCall. Looking down on pit lane, I just saw Tim Pappas, your leader oh. in our GTA category, come down on pit lane in that Black River Caviar. Mercedes SLS AMG, not sure of his problems. Oh, that's going to be devastating for his race here today. That is a tough break. That puts Michael Mills in the number 41 effort Porsche back into the lead in the GTA subcategory in 10th. And Marcello Hahn now um, uh, in the... Oh, look at this. Guy Smith has gone around Dial, And uh, Dial is slowing. Something is wrong. There goes O'Connell. Dial has a huge issue, Jeff. Did he cut down a right front tire? I thought I saw the right front of that car down low. Not sure if he cut one down. No, it doesn't look like it. Don't see any vibrations coming from oh, that man. car. But Oh, devastating for Ryan Dial. Second place now. That'll put uh, up to third place, which was Guy Smith. He'll be in second. Boy, the Cadillac's up to fourth and fifth. Yeah, it's a, and uh, right now, Butch Leitzinger all over the back. That's what we're watching on our global web feed. Uh, is Butch Leitzinger all over the back of Andy Pilger. And Andy, uh, he's going to be playing wingman extraordinaire here. One, he wants to help his buddy Johnny get his third straight championship. But two, he wants to let Johnny have a free run because Johnny's going to earn points for uh, Cadillac in the Manufacturers Championship with Mike Skeen out. Let's not forget there's some really huge Manufacturer Championships that are crucial in this battle as well. And by the way, we just got word from Alec Udell's pit from Motorsports Development Group. They've lost radio communication with Alec. So Alec is out there uh, sort of uh, circulating like a Soyuz astronaut right now with uh, no radio communication to base. So tough deal for him right now. So right now for him, it's just put your head down. And remember, best defense, good offense. Drive fast. Yeah, just getting a word from our crack statistician team here and saying that if they finish where they are in the GTS category, Mark Wilkins would still have a seven-point lead over Lawson Aschenbach. Talk about bringing it close to the final round tomorrow, yep. round number 16. Doesn't get much closer Crazy than that. Crazy close. And you know, and same thing you were talking about with Skeen. Neither Wilkins or Janssen are going to get any lap times, so they'll be at the back of the GTS group. They're going to have to come through all that traffic. While the way things are going, Aschenbach would be up, up near the front. Boy, look at this now. They have run down Roush, and there's Udell. Roush in that multicolored number 60. And, uh, Jeff, that is a 302R as opposed to the 302S uh, that uh, Udell is running. Uh, so subtle differences really but this is a huge battle for the final podium spot in GTS. Yeah it sure is. Mustang, Mustang, Camaro here, Jack Ralph Jr., Alec Udell, Lawson Aschenbach. The R version comes with the fuel cell. Some different changes from, yep. from Ford. Most of the S cars they do make that modification but the fuel cell seems to be the biggest but nose to tail, yeah. three-way draft. Alec Udell wants to get around Jack Roush, put that car uh, between himself and Lawson Aschenbach, try to get that final podium spot. And right behind them, not right behind, a few spots back is Drew Riggins having another great day in his 0-2 Aston Martin. But the guy who's also been impressive right behind Drew, the number 90 of Vesco Kozarov from Salt Lake City, the hometown favorite, and running well up into the top 10 in his debut. That's fantastic stuff. Uh, but for Aschenbach sitting in fifth, Baldwin leads. This is huge for us. You know, if he can get by these two guys somehow, fifth to third, that's huge. Well, right now the only thing that's saving Mark Wilkins from losing the lead as they run, of course, was those seven bonus points for getting that pole position. Yeah. Or right now, as they run, they would be tied for the championship. Wow, look at the closest there. And then we got to go to wins, and not sure who would that be. I think that would a tiebreaker would have yep. to go to Lawson, I believe. I believe so, yeah, because he's won three of the last four and had that kind of fortunate win at St. Pete. But still, uh, yeah, that gives him more wins in the uh, in, in the category right now. So, wow, that's that's uh, absolutely fascinating, and that's, uh, that's why we love it, man. It's uh, just so close on every level here. Look at Aschenbach just uh, thinking about it for a second, trying to duck underneath here. And me Look at Guy Smith. Once he got around and clear of uh, second place, he has absolutely run down in a heartbeat, it almost, it seems, uh, Robert Thorne. So, uh, that, you know, Dial was quick, but, boy, right now, Guy Smith is coming on. Yeah, don't have a word on what happened with Ryan Dial's car. He's still down on pit lane. They're looking at the front of his car but got the passenger door open. Looks like he'll be getting back underway. You see the crew member standing in front of his car ready to pull away. Unfortunate for Ryan Dial in that effort racing Porsche GT3R. Yeah, it is. But, boy, this battle at the front has just gone purple, man. It is intense at this stage. And uh, Guy Smith 
all over the back of Thorne that backs off a little bit. Some of that, make sure they're getting, remember, that Bentley, that uh, Brightly Mobile One Bentley is turbocharged, and so uh, that runs a bit hotter just by its nature. And uh, But then again, so is the car right in front. So Guy is going to be very mindful of uh, giving, making sure he's got air into the uh, car, but when he gets the opportunity, you know he's going to knife through. Also getting word that James Safranis, the number 14 Global Motorsports Group, Spider Thermal Club, Audi R8 Ultra, just joined the race. So the problems they had at the beginning uh, of the race before the pre-grid even got going, they're able to join, at least try to get some more points yep. and help secure that manufacturer championship for Audi. Well, they had an engine swap, uh, you know, that uh, was a big issue. And they, you know... <laughs> Not a lot of time on the schedule to get that done, and uh, so they may have just had a little complication left over from that. There's the story. Thorne, the white uh, uh, Bentley, Guy Smith just trying to mess with the young man, Robert Thorne. I mean, Guy Smith is about as veteran savvy and fast a racer it is. Uh, Robert Thorne, a young gun to be sure. Not a ton of experience, uh, certainly at this level of car. So Guy, you know, he's going to... He's going to get in those mirrors and mess with There's Johnny O'Connell, and then comes that next group battling for fourth, Andy Pilgrim, the ta Team Cadillac, and Butch Leitzinger in the Team Bentley. Great stuff. Yeah, it sure is, and you see that battle there with getting into lap traffic now as they catch to the back of our GTS field. And look at Robert Thorne. What a veteran move there. Tries to put <laughs> Buzz McCall between himself, and he waited till that last minute to make the pass. Unfortunately, down there in turn number five with the banking that's on the inside of that corner, you sort of lose that advantage. But great heads-up driving by Robert Thorne. Yeah, I mean, the kid races well above his years in terms of experience. He really does a nice job. And, you know, that's one of the issues here. As they head now toward Witchcraft, uh, they're coming up on uh, Jorge De La Torre, who's in the hunt and leading currently in the Rookie of the Year points in GTS. And again, Thorne, but look at Guy Smith having none of it, said, you go, I go, buddy boy. You're not going to do that again to me right now. And I'm sure Jorge De La Torre was almost ducking inside the car with the onslaught of these two GT stars coming by him. But Jorge De La Torre, the De La Torre Oil yep. uh, Company, doing a great job leading the Rookie of the Year points in the GTS category. All part of that big contingent from the racers group and Aston Martin Racing. I think uh, four cars here this weekend. Yeah. Had six at our Sonoma round last time. So we really appreciate the racers group and Aston Martin Racing, all part of the probably world challenge. Oh, absolutely. And the guy uh, who's right in front of Jorge right now in terms of the run order is Jeff Reeves, who's chasing Jorge in those Rookie of the Year points. Meanwhile, onto the front straight we go. And uh, oh boy, Butch Leitzinger got a great run. Pilgrim is going mega defense. And uh, look at that. Leitzinger now going to say, well, if you want to make that move, I'm going to try and come up the outside, see what I can do here. There's O'Connell. And again, everybody was talking about the straight line speed of the Cadillacs. Pilgrim has just enough to hang on to it, but you know what? Everybody who's thinking about the straight line speed of the caddies, what they weren't thinking about was the Bentley turbos at, at a mile high. Those cars pretty good at the end of this long, with two thirds of a mile straight too. Well, if you look at the steering wheel on those Cadillac CTS VRs, I'm sure there's a protection mode button right there for Andy Pilgrim. He put it. He's trying to protect his teammate not only for that drivers championship for Johnny O'Connell, but a manufacturer championship for Cadillac as Butch Lightsinger down to the inside. Boy, unbelievable what we're seeing here right now. This is third, fourth, and fifth championship leader trying to uh, take advantage of an unfortunate opportunity to Mike Skeen, second in the points championship, who broke right at the standing start and has pulled off. Looks like they are done. It, the team is throwing everything they can to try and get him out. But right now, uh, you know, part of the story that we haven't really addressed yet, uh, yet, Jeff, as we watch this run through witchcraft one more time, is that new rule. Wasn't in place in the past. 70% of the leader's laps you've got to complete. And, uh, you know, the longer Skeen stays, less likely he'll make that 70%. Lawson Aschenbach goes down into the windup and gets around Alec Udell. Wow. Lawson Aschenbach up to fourth, but kind of balked up a little bit on the yeah. exit speed. Alec Udell looking to drive back around the Camaro down the straightaway here. And watch out for Besko Kozarov. Started from the pit lane up to sixth place in our GTS category. Well, he's been spectacular. Aschenbach's got the line. Besko going to try and dive down underneath Udell. He's got the nose there. They almost touched. I think they may have just a little bit. And uh, Udell not wanting to give that spot. Now fighting for it as they head into turn two. And not going to be able to make it work. And what a move by Vesco Kozarov. He's just been spectacular today. Yeah, he sure has. That Nissan Skull Candy stance. 370Z, three cars from that stable over at the Skull Candy with our touring cars, David, uh, sorry, Steve Doherty yep. and uh, Brian Heikotter competing in our touring car category in the Nissan Altimus. Yeah, absolutely, and right behind now, uh, Udell's day is not going to get any easier because Drew Riggis 
is coming up after him. And Mark Clennon, the Invisible Glass Premier Copier Shop, that purple Aston Martin just got it completely sideways as he's spooling it up trying to take a run. There he is. He's joined this battle. Yeah, great run for Mark Clennon as well. Having yeah. his best run of the year, sitting up into the eighth position. So great run from Mark Clennon. Well, you know, Mark uh, has some experience, ran here in 2012 with a good uh, 12th place run. Actually qualified a little better than that, slipped back in the race, but, you know, he too has been working very hard on his program, and it is solid. There's Kozarov in that multicolored black with the teal colors on it. Boy, what a story he has been, and, and from Salt Lake City, so the hometown favorite, and the crowd enjoying this moment immensely. But there, I mean, look at that, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. <laughs> that's some close racing. Boy, the magic number's got to be two, though, because that's Mark Wilkins' lead over Lawson Aschenbach now. Only two points is the lead. Lawson Aschenbach going to start battling with Jack Roush for that podium position. If he gets around Jack Roush for that third place, that'll put him into the points lead. Oh, it's going to play out. This is going to be exciting stuff. 19 minutes oh. remaining. Oh, is that Thorne? That is Thorne. And the 96, that's Brad Adams trying to get going again. So, boy, if that, I'm trying to make sure that is Thorne, I believe it is. Yeah, number six, Robert oh. Thorne, the K-Pax McLaren. Unbelievable. So that means that uh, Guy Smith now should be picking up the lead. Here he comes by. O'Connell now second. Pilgrim third. Leitzinger fourth. Here comes Thorne in fifth, recovering. Then Lazaro. Oh, my. What a huge development here in Guy Smith. Boy, and I'll tell you what, I think Andy Lee's taking a serious run for seventh on Andrew Palmer down into turn one. So Andy Lee making his GT debut in the Crown 7 Laguna Bikes. Best IT writer engineering, Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, what a day for him, too, if he can uh, make a move like that and uh, make the move. But for Johnny O'Connell, that's been by Thorne, second place. More points. Boy, it's, it's just amazing what these Cadillac boys can pull off sometimes. Yeah, we're waiting for Statman to give me the numbers here <laughs> for our GT category. As soon as we get that, we'll let you and update you where the standings would be as they run right now. But uh, saw that Jeff Rees was also into that contact. Had to think lap traffic played yeah. a battle uh, a factor in that as we look through here our points category. 18 minutes left, and the one concern is you're getting some of the uh, the new tabulations coming in. But one thing, these Cadillacs, the later they go in the race, if there's not another caution, their tires tend to heat up quicker than these GT3 cars. So with uh, you know 18 minutes left to go, boy, it's I, I'm sure right now these two guys, O'Connell and Pilgrim, doing everything they can, using the traction control to their everything they uh, they can to not spin up those tires. Yeah, those Pirelli P0s, what an amazing tire when they've come into the series. The Pirelli P0 race slick on all six categories of our cars. Can't say enough about those great Pirelli P0s. But we try because they deserve it. They are <laughs> yeah, phenomenal tires, five, there's no question. Five more years for title sponsor and official tire supplier for the Pirelli World Challenge. Absolutely yep. amazing. Well, here's a stat for you, and a lot of it driven by the Pirelli P0s. The track record set here in 2012. They qualify in the top 12 GT cars underneath the track record. And when you take a look at the track record in, set in 2012 in GTS, the top 13 underneath it. And while we've got the GT3 cars that have upped the ante seriously and brought the Cadillac GT uh, built regulation cars along with them when they were you know, brought into the series, not so in GTS. There's not been a huge change in regulations in the GTS cars. So where's that speed coming from? Teams doing development work, but more than anything else, Pirelli's. Yeah, absolutely, that Pirelli P0 tire making the difference in all six classes of the Pirelli World Challenge. There's a good shot of Michael Cooper, that number yeah. 28 Black Dog Speed Shop Chevy Camaro. We're used to seeing 20, uh, Tony Gables behind the wheel of that car. Michael Cooper tested the brand new Z28 version of the Camaro in the Thursday test day just to give the officials here at Pirelli World Challenge some data to look at that car and thinking about getting it homologated for the GTS category. Did a pretty good job. He steps into the Camaro. So kind of a reward. Yeah. I happily absolutely. tell Ray Sorensen that me or you are available to do that anytime they want. Anytime. Yeah, we'd be happy to do that. By the way, it is such a joy to watch two absolute pros race. Just watch Andy Pilgrim in traffic make some absolutely stellar moves to put some distance between himself and Leitzinger. And you say, well, what do you mean? And, you know, Leitzinger should have. Well, no, Leitzinger, the reason that uh, hit his move was stellar was he recognized if I force the issue it's going to be a big wreck he didn't try and force it speaking of uh, potential there they are working now through that group battling for third coming up through GTS and Vesco Kozarov he and Alec Udell have just been given the old swap and go uh, normally I would make fun of Nick Asayan driving with his left turn signal on but he's running second so I can't really do that but that's 
Natural Cures, Speed34.com, Aston Martin, GT4 Vantage, doing a great job not allowing Jack Baldwin in that reset MD Porsche Cayman S pulling away. It's still a battle for our overall lead in the GTS category. 1.2 seconds that time by. It's that close as you see it on your screen. Well, one thing that does seem that turn signal working is that it certainly confirms that these are production-based cars. This is not a silhouette thing with a, a, a purebred race chassis and his bodywork hung on it. These are cars that start as production cars, and that's what makes this, this class so... You know, I love the GT cars, but there's something special about these guys uh, because they are wheeling cars that uh, you know you just can drive by on the street, you know, or get passed by on the street uh, frequently. That's pretty cool. But well, we do say it's the stars and cars of the Pirelli World Challenge. Yep. Speaking of which, make sure if you're listening live at this great facility, join us tomorrow, a noon to one o'clock, for our driver autograph session. The cars that you drive to the track, the cars that you see in the parking lots, or like me and you, the cars we wish we could yeah. drive, yeah. all competing here in Pirelli World Challenge. Absolutely, and I mean, you take a look at the variety of manufacturers uh, represented from around the globe, and uh, it, the influx this year with these GT3 cars and others as well, that's the world in Pirelli World Challenge. It truly has become a global contest, and uh, again, everybody uh, benefiting from these Pirelli P0 slicks. Uh, it's been spectacular. Under 15 minutes to go, there is Jack Baldwin leading the Reset MD Porsche. There is second in... Uh, Nick Isayan's car, there is your leader in the overall run order in Turing car. There comes Johnny O'Connell, Andy Pilgrim, the second of the Bentleys, and here we go. The battle for third is just immense right now, and Lawson Aschenbach is not giving Jack Roush any kind of a breather here. He's in full attack mode. And here, oh, he may have just found a gap. Showed the nose. Is he going to be able to make it work? No, Roush is the inside for the next left-hander. And Lawson, that is wind-up, now into release. And Lawson, you know, he, he, you don't want to get caught out there too bad where you start to lose a ton of time heading down this long two-thirds of a mile straight. Yeah, but you think about that. He gets the nose on there. Hey, I'm in the points lead. Go back. Nope, not in the points lead. Hey, back in the points lead. Nope, not in the points lead. It's that close it for is. the GCS championship. It's spectacular. And Anthony Lazaro just weaving his way through all these guys. Not quite going to get Roush. Boy, he would have wanted it. And look at Drew Rick as uh, Aschenbach didn't get the run onto the long straight that he wanted. Drew Riggett's almost able to make the pass. That's the last thing that Lawson wants to see. And Robert Thorne coming through this group as well, trying to recover from that incident they had well leading with lap traffic. Brad Adams and Jeff Reeves, I believe, all part of that incident. Good recovery from uh, Robert Thorne. Boy, did you see what Lawson Aschenbach did there? This guy is, he's one of the absolute best pilots in the paddock. When Thorne came through, opened the wheel, diamonded the corner, got a great run out of it, and almost drove into the back of Jack Roush. He had such a good run off the corner. Pro on pro, man. I love watching this stuff. These guys are spectacular. Look at Andy Lee trying to get around Andrew Palmer. Andrew Palmer getting held up a little bit by Jack Roush. Andy Lee, boy, talk about having the biggest smile on your face all week weekend long stepping into this Ryder Engineering Lamborghini Gallardo. They made that happen. Invisible glass on the side of that car. Crown 7, best IT. Laguna all the Bikes supporties. Laguna Bikes. Great, partners, great job though. for him. And it's a partnership between Best IT and Ryder Engineering. And Ryder builds the GT3 Lamborghinis, uh, the Gallardos this year, and the Huracans in the future. And they wanted to up their game in terms of representation in the U.S. And they're committed, of course, to some programs in Europe. They're based in Bavaria in Germany. And so they wanted a U.S. partner. Well, they found one in Best IT. And boy, is that going to benefit certainly Andy Lee, but uh, also Harry Curtin and, and that entire Best IT program. And again, Aschenbach, he, he really works this line through uh, wind-up and tries to get a run. Now watch him diamond it here, try and get a run under the back of Rush, but the problem is this Drew Riggins has been wicked quick at the end of this straight, and he once again is going to attack Aschenbach. Well, Statman gave it to me once again yeah. as they run right now, unofficially barring penalties and driving penalties tomorrow. Johnny O'Connell, three-time Pirelli World Challenge champion. Wow, that's 152-point lead over Mike Skeen. That would give him the championship. Mike, we're sorry if you were just listening. You have been such a warrior this year, my friend. Uh, tough, tough, tough to see it. But uh, uh, that's the uh, the swings and arrows of racing. Look at that. Drew Riggins got around Aschenbach. And now Aschenbach trying to fight back. So suddenly that uh, two-point margin is going to balloon up just a little bit, up to seven. I mean, that's how close this all is. Every position right now 
major significance. Why, well, I guarantee you Mark Wilkins is in that racers group pit right now going, hey, it's $1,000 every every time you can get a car past Lawson Oshabach. He's going to go back and start talking to Alec Udell. Hey, get back around that Camaro. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. And all the points I can get, they're the biggest cheerleaders for everybody that's behind Lawson Oshabach right now trying to get around that Black Dog Speed Shop Camaro. That's right. And even though, let's keep in mind, Ryan Dial in the 31 effort racing Porsche has parked and is in the pits, you see another one. It's the red and black number 41 effort Porsche. Mike Mills. Points leader in the GTA subcategory for our sportsman drivers, and he now uh, is up a couple of spots uh, in the race over Marcello Hahn, who's running second. But more importantly, Mike is just building his margin right now in the lead in the run for the BRM Chronograph Sportsman Cup. He yeah, sure is. Marcello Hahn in second. Alec Welch, how about that? Yeah. Good job for him in third in that Audi R8, the prestige imports car, uh, helping him out. Also, uh, a lot of great supporters from Thermal Club and Spider with all of Global Motorsports Group. Boy, and look at this. Leitzinger once again trying to get around Pilgrim it's a tough tough thing to do oh we got a car that has looped it that is it looks like Marcelo one of the Lamborghinis Hahn. Marcelo Hahn off to the side oh so, that's an Audi I thought that's Paul that is an Bolin Audi. oh that's Bolin yep he's able to gather it up the Tampa Bay Jaw Surgery Center car but gathers it up gets it going again so no caution coming out and uh, that is I believe your leader Guy Smith coming by him heading into Blackrock so he boy that was an injury you don't see a lot of a uh, that was through workouts what they call it turn three and Bolin got a workout there as it snapped around on him well getting a workout right now is Andy Pilgrim under pressure from Butch Leitzinger Butch going left looking right Andy Pilgrim just a surgeon like his teammate Lat Sonoma that we saw there just putting that Cadillac ever so slightly just where Butch Leitzinger can't quite get around him Butch paid for the whole track. I bet you he's using every inch of it right now. Absolutely. Your entry fee covers it all. That's kind of like how I golf. I paid for the entire course. I'm going to see what the Sand approach trap, to... water, and everything, Yeah, I want right? to see what the yep. approach to three looks like from the 15th fairway. That's kind of how I play. So anyway, uh, <laughs> but look at this. Then you get the spots on the track as, as you're watching Johnny O here. And uh, he is, you know, right now, he is, uh, he, he's going to kiss Andy's ring uh, at the end of this one because uh, he has just been spectacular in keeping Butch behind him and allowing Johnny max potential points here. Uh, just fantastic stuff. Yeah, we want to throw out, let's not forget, the championship battle for the manufacturers. Yeah. Cadillac running second and third. The first Audi is all the way back in seventh. So that could play a factor tomorrow. That championship's going to go down to the wire. Yeah, incredibly close. No question of that. So uh, give you an, and in GTS, Kia, uh, you know, came in. Kia had an eight-point lead over Ford. And, you know, you take a look at how, how that sits right now. Uh, Baldwin and Hassan, but then it's a Ford with Roush sitting there. Third, oh, and Andy Lee has looped it. Ah. Oh. Yeah, not, it looks like a quick one and able to just get it going again in a hurry. So no big harm or foul there. And look at Butch, just attack, attack, attack. And Andy Pilgrim, uh, he is in defense mode again. Two of the absolute best drivers you can imagine. It's immense experience in racecraft here. Uh, this battle for fourth is just glorious. Yeah, it sure is. What a great battle. It's epic here. And uh, we talk about what the manufacturers care about and all the manufacturer yeah. partners we have here in Pirelli World Challenge. If it runs as we are, Pirelli, uh, Audi and Cadillac tied for the manufacturer's <laughs> championship. Just gets curiouser and curiouser, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? This is, is awesome stuff as we're down to just under seven minutes to go in this 15th round, the penultimate round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championship for GT and GTS at the Nissan Championship Finale uh, here at Miller Motorsports Park, brought to you by Motul, presented today on our global coverage by Cadillac. Uh, just great partners all, and uh, there's the story. And again, O'Connell able to get around Buzz McCall and gives a little bit of a gift. So does Pilgrim, but does Butch go through? No, Butch could not get by Buzz cleanly there. So Butch had to wait just a minute. But again, I, you know, I give these guys that really understand it so much credit. Better to breathe, give up a tenth, than get up caught with that guy and give up a half a second to a second. That's huge. Oh, look, at we've got a Kia back on track. Yeah, sure is. Nick Janssen back underway in that number 36, Kinetic Motorsports, Kia Forte. Or, sorry, Kia Optima. I just got done calling the Kia Forte. But <laughs> Nick exactly. Janssen got the win in that Kia Forte running as Optima. Now, unfortunately, with that new rule, 70%, I don't think they're going to get any points. They haven't been out there long enough. Yeah, but, it's it, hey, it's a practice and test session to try and salvage something tomorrow so they'll play the game. Yeah, that's going to be a big numbers crunch here where they go, oh, oh, Jack Roush just got way loose and Aschenbach is down to the inside. Aschenbach makes the pass. He slices through. Uh, that just basically puts him back into fourth, though. So that's the uh, other scenario there for Aschenbach. 
Just looking on my timing and scoring, Nick Asayan comes across the line. Jack Baldwin dropped way back. Nick Asayan, your new leader in our GTS category in the natural cure speed 34 dot com Audi, oh, sorry, Aston Martin GT4. Oh my god, I don't know what happened there. Did not see what happened to Baldwin. We'll try and get an update for you, but unbelievable. Unbelievable. So right now, uh, that changes it up. I mean, Baldwin is second. He's still second. Uh, which uh, so Aschenbach, you know, fourth right now, but that's big because that swing from first to second in those points, we've talked about how huge it is. This has big implications, certainly, for Baldwin in, in particular. Well, Nick Sands' teammate Drew Reed gets up to third place. Jack Baldwin second, Lawson Aschenbach in fourth. That moves that gap back to two points over uh, Mark Wilkins, still has the lead over Lawson Aschenbach. We'll see how it plays out with Jack Baldwin. He's going to gain some points in third, not out of this championship yet, but wow, can Nick. Uh, saying hold it together to get a second Pirelli World Challenge Championship win in his career, long and storied career for yeah. Nick is saying. Well, you have, whoop, and uh, Butch Leitzinger gets around while we were watching and calling the developments that were unfolding in GTS. Leitzinger finally has gone around Andy Pilgrim with four minutes left. Now he is going to drop the hammer if he's got it. Oh, for Johnny O'Connell, this is going to be mega. Uh, we know Johnny O'Connell will be aggressively defend his spot. No question of that. We get confirmation from timing and scoring and race control. White flag for Guy Smith next time by. So that's where things sit right now. Jeff Lepper heading down. He's got to do some interviews for our NBCSN enhanced coverage, which will be coming to you in just a couple of weeks here. He's going to go down and get those TV interviews. And then I'll be heading down for Victory Circle as we are closing in now. The final three and a half minutes left in this one. In GT, Guy Smith leads over Johnny O'Connell, but Butch Leitzinger is now through and into third. You know that Brightling Mobile One, Bentley Continental GT3 from Dyson Racing will be unleashed. Pilgrim and Lazaro complete the top five in the GTA subcategory for our sportsman drivers. Mills leads over the zero Marcello Hot and the 76 of Alex Welch in the Audi. And in GTS, Nick Isan in the natural cures. Aston Martin, what a story, is leading now over Jack Baldwin. We do not know what happened to Jack in that reset MD car. Drew Riggetts, an amazing run for Drew. The Aston Martins, loving Miller, sitting there in the third spot in the 0-2. Lassen Aschenbach is fourth in the number one. Uh, Black Dog Speed Shop Camaro and Jack Roush completing the top five in the Roush Road Racing number 60 Mustang with Udell in the 17 Mustang fighting for him for that final fifth spot. And we have a lap and a third basically left in this one. The next time we see Guy Smith come by, we expect a white flag to this number 88. Again, the Breitling Mobile One Bentley from Dyson Racing, the Continental GT3. Here he comes. White flag. One lap to go here for round 15. And Leitzinger, he has made up a lot of ground on Johnny O'Connell. Now, the interesting thing is... That Cadillac has some good long lungs and that big pounding V8 down this long straight. And he needs to make hay if he can because Leitzinger, once you get into these twisty transitions that are fairly quick where the arrow of these FIA GT3 homologated uh, uh, Bentleys is really going to come into play, they should be able to run him down. In fact, he has. This is it. The battle for second and in many ways the battle for the championship lead. This is mega. There's Guy Smith. Uh, let me just want to confirm here that he still holds a fast lap. I believe he does. So, uh, actually, yep, he does by only two tenths, though, uh, as a great lap by Robert Thorne was close. And here he comes, trying the outside. Is Leitzinger on Johnny O? Trying to sweep around the outside, not going to get it done. Now, the very fast run. Oh, and he did the over-under. Did he get to the inside? He did. No! O'Connell shuts the door as they bend through witchcraft. And Leitzinger realized Johnny was coming and said, all right, I better live to fight now. Now through the attitudes. First, second, down here, bad attitude it is. As it drops, plummets, falls off the planet. And a little bit as you make that turn, until you get to the bottom of bad attitude, it's actually off camber. That was the Tuella turn. Now the run to the clubhouse turn. Butch going to try it down to the inside. You know Johnny's going to go uber deep. He turns in. That is the clubhouse turn. Now into the turn called wind-up. And Johnny going to do everything he can. He just wants to get a run 
out of this last turn. Butch diamonding it, trying to open it up to pick the throttle up sooner. Guy Smith comes through. He gets the win. Here we go at the line. O'Connell by not even a car length, by about six feet, let's call it. That was amazingly close. So O'Connell second, Leitzinger third. Here comes Pilgrim, good through fourth. And now Anthony Lazaro is going to bring it home in fifth, then Thorne in the sixth spot. And then we are watching now for the rest of the field to come through. There's Andrew Palmer. So now what is unfolding in the GT category, of uh, the GTS category? Well, we're going to be watching for that one. And it, too, a pretty furious battle at this stage. And we're going to watch what happens. It looks as though watching from Mike Mills. He comes through. Yes, he will get the win in GTA and enhance his lead for the BRM Chronograph Sportsman Cup to be awarded at the season-ending awards banquet tomorrow night in downtown Salt Lake City. But whether Nick is saying, here he comes. The natural cures Aston Martin onto the front straight. Nick is saying, brings it home. Gets his first win of 2014. Jack Baldwin, who led most of the race in the reset MD Porsche Cayman, drops to the second spot. And what's going to unfold here for third? It looks like it's going to be Drew Riggetts, but he's got a scrum behind him. Lawson Aschenbach would like to get by. He's not going to do it. And Drew Riggetts gets his first podium with Aschenbach fourth. Wow. Unbelievable stuff. And a side-by-side -side battle between Rausch and Udell at the line by three feet. It is Rausch over Udell for the uh, fifth spot, and almost getting them all was Mark Clennon, who had a great run, just ran out of track. That is spectacular stuff. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. We've got another round to go tomorrow. I don't know how it could possibly top this one, and you know what? I have a gut feeling it's going to, just the way this has all been playing out here. So, pretty spectacular stuff. But once again, uh, just a huge, huge day here. Uh, in, in terms of development, certainly, for the championships at the very drop of the green flag, uh, the green lights, when the uh, lights went out, as both of the Kias, including the point leader in GTS, got taken out in an incident. We didn't see it. We don't know exactly what happened. We don't want to speculate. But up at the front, Mike Skeen, who was only 42 markers off of Johnny O'Connell, broke right at the launch, had a problem there as well. So uh, I tell you, uh, this is uh, just fascinating what's unfolding. It has been turned absolutely on its ear here uh, in the points championship in both of the categories. So just some spectacular stuff. And then, of course, Johnny O'Connell defending on Butch Leitzinger in those final couple of laps after Andy Pilgrim had played wingman extraordinaire. Uh, just some incredible stuff. So, uh, boy, unreal what has unfolded here. So uh, we're going to give you an opportunity here. We're going to run through uh, the final order here in terms of the points, and we're going to wrap up our coverage here presented by Cadillac on our global web feed of this 15th round of the Pirelli World Challenge Championships for GT and GTS at the Nissan Championship Finale at Miller Motorsports Park brought to you by Motul. But uh, take a look at it. Guy Smith from the pole dropping back to uh, sixth. Uh, then that early caution and then coming back picking him off, eventually getting to the lead and bringing it home with a win and fast lap. And that is going to put him uh, into a, a pole position for tomorrow. Johnny O'Connell hanging on to second. And you think about where Johnny O'Connell started this one in the eighth spot. Had a great launch, certainly when everybody, when Skeen paused and bottled things up, O'Connell almost went for the lead. And then hangs on when Ryan Dial had his issues for second. Butch Leitzinger, once he got around Pilgrim, runs down Johnny. They have a great two-lap battle and uh, just not quite able to get it done. In fourth, Andy Pilgrim, again, wingman, and doing what he was uh, out here to do. They had a little problem in qualifying. He said he had a nasty push, and they figured that out because that car was quick enough to have a uh, play a big role in Manufacturers Championship as well as helping Johnny up front and then Anthony Lazaro in that beautiful red number 61 our Ferry Automotive Group Ferrari rounding out the top five with Thorne in the K-Pax McLaren the number six in six Andrew Palmer the 21 Global Motorsports Group Audi in seventh Alex Figgy the number nine K-Pax McLaren in eighth ninth your leader and winner in the GTA subcategory Mike Mills in the 41 effort Porsche and Andy Lee spin and all still top ten overall ninth in the uh, GT category great day for him then Marcello Hahn, as we talked about. There you go. Take a look at the official, unofficial results in G. What we uh, G2 what we're talking about there. You see Mills in ninth, and uh, Marcello Hahn in eleventh, first and second essentially, in the GTS. 
So uh, obviously uh, we have Guy Smith at the very top of this one uh, would be the winner in that one unofficially. Then O'Connell, Leitzinger, Pilgrim, and Lazaro, your top five. Uh, so that's how that shakes out. Uh, and you can see there uh, first and second in GTA, and it was Alex Welch who ended up in third in the GTA subcategory. There is our unofficial results on our global web feed for the GTS category. And Nick is saying, what a story after Baldwin led almost the whole thing. Didn't see what happened to Jack, but Asayan ends up with a three-and-a-half second margin win in the natural cures, Aston Martin over Baldwin in the Reset MD Porsche Cayman. Drew Riggitz in the uh, Racers Group, Aston Martin North America, 0-2, brings it home in third. Lawson Aschenbach in fourth. We think that's going to get him with just within a couple of points of uh, <laughs> Mark Wilkins in the battle for the GTS Points Championship and the Black Dog Speed Shop Camaro and completing the top five, Jack Roush Jr. in the Roush for road, road Racing, excuse me, Ford Mustang. Alec Udell in sixth in the Watson Racing MDG Mustang, 17 in the seventh spot, number 62, Mark Clennon, the premier copier, Champ, Invisible Glass, Aston Martin. Mike Cooper, the 2011 Touring Car Champion, making his debut in GTS and finishing with a strong top 10 finish in the number 28, Black Dog Speed Shop, Chevy Camaro, Mitch Landry, the Versa Crane, Deep South Motorsports Development Group, Mustang, number 97 and ninth, and completing the top 10, Tony Gaples in the Black Dog Speed Shop, Mustang, rounding out the top 10. So thank you very much for joining us here on our global web feed for this 15th round, the penultimate round of the Prelly World Challenge Championship for GT and GTS here at the Nissan Championship Finale at Miller Motorsports Park brought to you by Motul. Thanks to Cadillac for presenting our coverage here on our global web feed. Remember, folks, we do it again, Touring Car and the Touring Car and GT divisions racing again tomorrow. You can tune in to world-challenge.com. Watch those races unfold live right here on our global web feed. And uh, we're going to say farewell on our global web feed. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'm going to head and do some victory circle here at the track. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody.